Hello besties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making three weekly spreads for my November bullet journal setup this year. If you guys missed my full plan with me that I posted last week, it'll be linked down below. So definitely go check it out. It was a super fun setup. I'm doing a dark academia scrapbooky kind of museum themes with like a dark brown, beige, and blue color scheme. You guys saw the little flip through at the beginning there, but I think it's a super cute theme. I'm really happy with it. But I decided that I wanted to do a lot of my weekly spreads in advance this month because recently I've enjoyed being creative whenever I can but on a weekly basis I don't really have the time or energy or want to make weekly spreads. I like making beautiful spreads and I enjoyed taking the time to you know make the November setup and make the weekly spreads and stuff whenever I was filming this but I don't have time every Sunday to, like sit down and make a weekly spread and everything and also since I'm not doing like short form media this month which I talked about in my last video if you want to hear like all my thoughts on that but since I'm not really going to be making reels about my weekly spreads I just decided that I could make three of them at once in today's video. Technically I'm going to be using at least four possibly five for the month of November but I did not have time to film five weekly spreads in one video so I'm only doing three today but I think that still has a lot of inspiration for you just ideas of different weekly spreads that you can make in your own bullet journal if you want to take inspiration from this video and also just like different ways that I'm scrapbooking and carrying on the theme from my opening spreads into weekly spreads so that's what I'm doing here today and it's definitely going to be very helpful for me later on in the month just having these weekly spreads already made like I said I will have to do two at least one maybe two more later in the month but for the first three weeks like I said I'm super busy don't have the time to really make spreads so like just having it there is super easy and also great for planning ahead like the calendar that I made for my November blue journal setup from last week is a one page calendar so it fits right next to the cover page which is nice but it's also pretty small so I can fit some planning for the entire month in that spread you know just the general overview things like the hockey games that I'm going to my meetings that I have any like huge appointments or trips that I'm taking this month that kind of thing those are all in my calendar and that's not going to change however However, having three weekly spreads already made in advance makes it easier for me to plan specific things on a weekly basis in the future because if I have a meeting with like a professor for example in two weeks and I don't have space to put that on the calendar I could very easily just write it in the weekly spread already since it's already made for me you know so it really helps me planning ahead and things like that overall it's just a really great system for me I think just doing this ahead and I appreciate y'all you know chilling and watching this video and you know being patient with me as I'm you know working through a little bit of a not creative slump but you know kind of dealing with my creativity in different ways recently anyway I'm like tangenting I <laughs> I'm sitting right now in my closet of my dorm room waiting and trying to hurry and get this voiceover done before my roommate gets back because she usually gets back at like five o'clock it's 4 30 so I'm trying to get this done ASAP so I'm like rambling and not really thinking very straight but <laughs> let's just talk about what I'm actually doing on the spread here so for the first weekly spread I did something very very simple just eight boxes one for every day of the week and then the last one's going to be like a next week section where I'm planning ahead for the next week although technically since I have the next week spread already made I don't really need this section but you know so heavy whatever <laughs> um the top right corner is where i'm going to have an academic planner now usually i would divide my academic planner into five boxes and separate the tasks for each of my five classes that i'm taking this semester in this spread i just had a bunch of different lines and i'm just going to haphazardly place all of my assignments here that i have to get done in no particular order i think it works just as well if i have to just keep them all in one big list rather than divide them by class i mean all the activities and tasks and homework assignments are still written there it's just in different formats so you know it works just as well although i do prefer for the graph format but in this case I didn't have space for it. In the top left and bottom right corner I am doing my classic layering that I did in my November setup. I'm using very similar pieces of stationery with the brown washi tape that's like a darker tan has words and flowers on it. The random pieces of textbook paper or music sheets or book sheets of a book or something like that. I have my image in the top left corner. It's very hard to see because it's quite dark, but it's basically the image of a couple people standing and looking at pictures in a museum. It's very dark and moody with like the lights shining down on the artwork. There's a butterfly, there's doilies, there's washi that I used from the past couple of spreads in my November setup. Overall, like I said, there isn't really a huge theme for this month. There's not really any drawing motifs besides the sparkles and clouds that I'm adding to the spreads, but I think it's just the type of stationery that I'm using, making sure all the beiges are in like the same general color palette. Like beige is beige for sure, but there's like cooler toned beiges. There's like more yellowy toned beiges, more pinky toned. So I'm leaning more on the more neutral, cool tone, maybe kind of pinky toned beiges. I'm trying to take out any like super yellowy beiges and yellowy browns because I think having the combination of dark brown and blue just gives you a very cool toned palette and so adding a yellowy brown will kind of mess things up in here it's like very small nuanced things that like it's hard to explain 
green, but there's a specific type of paper that I wanted to add into these spreads, but it was just too yellow toned for me. So I couldn't put it in because it just kind of messed with the vibes a little bit. Anyway, that's like totally not necessary to talk about. <laughs> I'm moving on to the next spread now. So this is going to be my second weekly spread. And we have again, eight boxes, one for every day of the week, one for our next week section. And then the tall column on the left of these boxes is actually my academic planner. So for this week, I actually did divide it into the five different classes. I'm taking two film classes, a French class, a management class, and a religion class. So in each of these boxes, I'll put any assignments that I have for that week in that particular box. One thing that I really liked about this particular spread was just the design in each of the boxes. I'm taking inspiration from Leela Journals here and how she likes to really add just little filigree and details to her boxes. Like for example, on the spread before, I added little like petal shapes in the corners of every box. Here I have the blue strip at the top where I have the word like Monday, Tuesday, etc. But then below it, I have like these three little curved and like a little, I guess like they look like little dainty petal, maybe jewels coming down. What I was thinking here is like this is essentially like um like string or beads or lights and there's like crystals or lights coming down in the middle to kind of give it a dainty effect i don't know if i pulled it off as well as i have in the past but i took this idea from my december bullet journal setup from 2022 i talked about that setup in my top 10 bullet journal themes of all time video that i posted a couple weeks ago but in that setup i had quite a lot of like additions to boxes with like little sparkles around them or dotted lines around them or flowers in the corners or like like in this one like little strings hanging down from the days of the week like just add little small tiny details and fill up some space and make it look more dainty and pretty so I don't know if it was out of, as effective in this particular spread than it has been in the past but I did try to add something new you know and kind of make the boxes stand out from the academic planner in this one I tried to keep more of an asymmetrical look and keep all of the planning to the right side of the spread and have the left side be very heavy on scrapbooking I realized that just in general I tend to do this so that the left side of the spread is more thick with scrapbooking and I think it's because I'm a right-handed so whenever I layer a bunch of paper on top of each other especially if it's not glued completely sometimes my hand will brush the paper and like little corners will peel up of something that was glued or taped before so I try to keep all of my stationary layering to the left because if I'm right-handed then my right hand won't actually mess with the left side of the spread as much in general I try to not do this intentionally I want to keep all of my spreads different and have different types of layouts and different placement for all of the layering and stuff like that but I think just instinctively I usually put a lot of layering in the top left corner or the left side of a spread so unfortunately on all three of these spreads that is like a very similar layout but the boxes themselves are different so at least I tried to add some variety there. <laughs> I think this particular spread is most similar to my opening spreads of this month because I think it's just in general very dark and I like that about it. I used two not one pictures from Pinterest of different artwork. The one on the top is actually a framed painting that's just very very dark and moody. I think it's like a couple in the photo but it's just really hard to see but I don't really need to see it okay the vibes are what's important <laughs> and then the bottom one is a girl staring at a very large painting in a museum so again these very dark images are good for I think grounding the spread and I like contrasting that with the very light beiges and a little bit of blue that I'm adding with the Tombow dual brush pen you know overall I like the spread the best out of the three of them I think just because it is dark and moody November like I said in my last video is just my favorite month and it's like the darkest of the three autumnal months for me so dark academia lots of black and dark brown are like great colors to use for this month I think it just makes the most sense September in my head is like apple picking in like the sun kind of fall like it's still fall and orangey but we're getting more lighter colors kind of thing October is like spooky sure but November for me is like it's the end of fall we're getting towards winter the leaves have fallen at least not in Texas but in other places and <laughs> it's getting dark and moody there's more rainy days more thunderstorms things like that and so that's why the darker color palette stands out to me more and I honestly wish that I put more darker images in the first and third weekly spreads just kind of emphasize this fact but unfortunately I ran out of images so I could only do what I had with what I had previously printed but that being said I still like how they all turned out. <laughs> This last weekly spread actually only has six boxes instead of eight. Usually I would do, like I said, seven days of the week plus a notes box or a next week box. But in this one, I actually just combined Saturday and Sunday into one weekend box. So I had that one in the bottom right. Sometimes my weekends are very like boring. Like I usually film and edit on the weekends, but that's like something I do so often that I don't really have to write many tasks for it. Usually I'll go to church on Sunday sometimes I'll volunteer, but like again, that I do pretty frequently. So I don't have a bajillion things to do like I do during the week where I have like homework and meetings and classes and going 
following the practices and stuff like usually my weekends are pretty chill or i'm traveling on the weekends which means that it's really chill because i usually don't plan anything i just say like drive to x place on this day and then i'll do whatever i need to on that day and not use my bullet journal because i usually don't use my bullet journal whenever i'm traveling so that's usually why i can combine my weekends sometimes especially when they are very chill weekends and don't have much going on because i don't really need much space to plan and therefore i can put both saturday and sunday into one box in the bottom right corner once again on this spread we have my academic planner on the top right five boxes that are actually going to be not titled but i know what they're for it's for my academic planning and on the bottom left i have a calendar and my to-do list section where i put general to-dos for the week and i think after seeing three weekly spreads you kind of get the gist of what i do whenever i'm planning spreads like on a weekly basis this is what i need to make weekly spread it's just a place for everyday planning a place for general overview weekly planning for things that are not necessarily um only for one day of that week and then also academic stuff whenever i'm taking college classes so that's what i usually need on a weekly basis of course if you bullet journal you will need something different than i do so i would just recommend you to kind of focus on what you need on a weekly basis like if you're trying to start bullet journaling what is it that you are using a bullet journal for is it for school is it for work is it for planning a project is it for just personal life are you a mom with kids are you a new adult you know just getting a new job like whatever aspect of your life that you're going through whatever era of life that you're in like whatever you specifically need to plan on a weekly basis that's what you put in your weekly spread so i always encourage taking inspiration from my videos or other creators and as always i'd love to see your recreations if you do recreate any of these spreads tag me on instagram or tiktok or whatever i'd love to see them but i do encourage you to like try to alter it to fit your own needs because your needs are going to be different than mine so like we're all going to need our blood journal for different things and the best part is you can customize it to whatever you need to so <laughs> if you need a space in here for project planning for work or activities are after school or whatever it is that you're doing in your life like you edit it, whatever you need to to make the planning process the most efficient it can be for your own life. Anyway, with all that being said, that's the end of this video. I feel like I talked super fast today, so I'm sorry if you couldn't understand me. <laughs> but this is the final flip through. I hope that you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite out of these three. And as always, subscribe. I post new blood journaling videos every single Saturday. I'm sending you guys so, so much love. Have an amazing week. And if you want to watch my November plan with me, I will have it linked right here on the screen.